Alright, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Elder Scrolls Online dungeon tutorial. I promised you on my Skull Caller Peak that I would be making a Fang Lair dungeon guide. And my Skull Caller Peak video did very decent, so I'm definitely coming out with the sequel right here, right now. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing to know about this dungeon is that it is very large, but it only has five bosses. So it's pretty regular, and the only reason I would even say that it's large is because it has so many ads. Now, ads are really easy and they're an essential part of dungeons. The only ads that you're going to find that may challenge you are the Bone Colossuses, and I know that's kind of hard to say, but these guys have pretty good health and they hit pretty hard. And you might say, oh, well, they're really easy, but you're going to fight 15 to 20 of them. I didn't count, but I just know every time you turn around, there's going to be a Bone Colossus there. And there is so many of them, but the rest of the ads shouldn't even give you trouble. But I'm going to be really honest here. There is so many ads in this. And, like, it's a huge dungeon. This is a massive dungeon. And the bosses are really easy to kill, but there's so many ads. And I just feel like this dungeon is so drug out because you're just killing these ads for so long there's so many rooms of ads now the cool thing about it is that the bosses are easy to kill so it should be very easy to run through it but if you don't know what you're doing the bosses are obviously going to get you but the ads will really just waste your time especially if you don't have very good dps you're just going to be standing there forever trying to kill these ads and it's a massive dungeon like i said grinding really isn't the most entertaining thing you can do in your life but I just think this dungeon is so boring. I don't know if it's just me, I'm insane or whatever. I've played so many dungeons, like, you don't even understand. Like, I literally, basically the only thing I do on ESO is play dungeons. And I just feel like this dungeon is so long, so drawn out. But anyway, let's get straight into the boss battles. So this first boss, whose name is Elizabeth Charnis, is literally as easy as it gets. It's so simple. You don't even really technically fight her, so... Whenever you run out there to fight her, she basically leaves and she turns into this ghost type thing that spawns these ads. She will spawn three waves of ads and every time you defeat these waves of ads, she'll lose a third of her health, which is very simple. It's basically like a normal dungeon type environment where you're just fighting ads the whole time. So very easy boss. The only thing you need to know is that she'll spawn wraiths, skeletons, and bone colossuses. The wraiths will throw these ice damages that are kind of strong and... There's also Archer and Melee Skeletons. They're very easy to kill. And then there's only going to be one Bone Colossus for each wave. So it's really not that big of a deal. It's pretty simple. This is a very simple boss. Now there will also be these Skulls that come out of the wall. And they'll hit you and they'll knock you down and do some damage. But besides that, there's not really too much to this boss. You're just killing waves. Try to avoid the Skulls. And there's going to be some interesting enemies. But nothing too difficult. Now one final thing, make sure you grab that chest that's by the door, it's pretty easy to see, but since she doesn't actually die, she drops all of her loot in this chest-like thing, so make sure you grab that. So your next boss is the Cadaverous Bear. This boss is interesting because it really has four pieces. It's not too difficult, but it has a quite a few components. So the first thing to know is that the main boss, who has the health bar and everything, is the Cadaverous Bear, and he has two smaller friends, which are called the Cinch, Tiger, and the Guar. Now, they also have three little wolf pets that follow them around. So, the only one that is affected by the actual bar and has any progression in killing the boss is the bear. So, first thing to know is that the bear is pretty weak. He only has a few AoE attacks, but nothing really powerful. So, the only thing you need to know is that he's not a big threat to you. Though, everything else is. The Guar and the Cinch are really going to be dealing the most damage. So the first thing that you need to know is the only thing that can be taunted by the tank is the bear. Everything else is untauntable. So the three little wolves will be untauntable and the cinch and the guar will also be untauntable. So don't freak out, but just be very careful and make sure your healer is being very attentive. Also, a very important thing is that your tank needs to stand in the middle or in a central location and taunt the boss while everyone else can stay around it so they can be healed and constantly protected by each other. So, the first thing you need to know is that these wolves are very interesting. They will follow you around and they will explode. They will pick everyone except for the tank to follow and basically what you have to do is you have to run in circles around the tank and the big boss just not getting hit by this wolf because this wolf will kill you very quickly it is very powerful and it'll explode as soon as it hits you you can technically kill them but it's just much much easier if you just run around in a circle basically kiting these wolves so 
Next we have the Guar, and this guy is pretty easy. He's not quite as hard as a cinch, but he will emit these poison, and it's pretty basic, but it's just AoE poison, which can kill you if you let it, but if you just look out for it, it shouldn't do anything too bad. Now, the toughest guy here is the Cinch Tiger. He has a very powerful ability where he leaps onto you with this thing called a Death Grip. Now, the only way you can counter the Death Grip is by using an interrupt ability. You cannot break out of it and you can't just kill him while he's attacking you. One of your friends has to walk up behind him and use an interrupt ability. So it's pretty crazy if you let him do this because it is an instant kill. He'll take a few seconds and then kill you very quickly. So the thing to know about these guys is that when you kill them, which they can all be technically killed, they'll become disabled and they just kind of sit there for a minute while they do regenerate the health and come back if you burn the boss quickly, you kill all these guys as quick as you possibly can. You're not going to get hit with any of these abilities. Like, you're not going to have to deal with poison, and you're not going to have to deal with a death grip. So, it's very important that you try to burn these guys as quick as possible, especially the cinch. I would always try to burn the cinch first, then the guar, and then don't really worry about the wolves. Just try to go in a circle. But it's very important that you make the most time that you have because the bosses will start to use their abilities 30 seconds in so the little guys won't start to attack you until 30 seconds in to being alive so if they just respawn you have 30 seconds to kill them again or they'll start using their abilities or as soon as you start the match they'll start using their abilities within 30 seconds of you getting there so you need to make sure to burn them as quickly as possible run in a small circle around the central boss and have your tank stay there and taunt the boss so it's very simple it's kind of a mechanic, it's a pretty big deal if you don't follow the mechanic. You gotta make sure you're burning the cinch and the guar constantly. You gotta make sure you're running in a circle, try not to get hit by the wolves. You gotta make sure your tank is standing still, your healer is being very, very safe, and uh, it should be pretty easy. The third boss's name on our list is Kalurion. He's a mage kind of guy, and he has a few basic attacks worth note, really only three. So. He spawned these spike-like things, which are the most powerful attack that he has, that come out of the ground, and they have three waves of damage. The first one is that they will pop up with an open claw, and you will see them, and then you'll have some time before they close, which will stun you, dealing some damage. And then, the third wave is a much more powerful wave, which can kill you, so these little claws have three waves of damage, but are very powerful, and they'll stun you and deal damage, enough to kill you if you have a low amount of health. So, the next damage that he has is just a basic AoE where he throws these orbs that can knock you down. They're not super powerful, but they can knock you down, which is annoying. And his last one is he throws up these vine-like things that travel through the ground, and they're kind of stupid, honestly. They don't really do anything. Now, the only thing that really makes him stand out from anyone else is that he has these five relics that activate randomly throughout the fight. So, you have to stop these relics because they'll be dealing damage, they'll be spawning ads, they'll be doing all kinds of different stuff, making him use different attacks giving him help giving him big mini bosses and stuff like that so you have to destroy these stones as quickly as you possibly can it'll tell you that this relic is activated and you will turn around and be able to see that that relic is activated the relic spots are shown throughout the edges of the room they're very easy to see you'll see this glowing huge relic very very easy to see very very hard to miss you just have to walk up to it and destroy it they'll have quite a bit of health it's very important that you try to destroy these as quickly as possible because they're very powerful and it's kind of hard to explain this, but basically these attacks can overlap. So if you sit there basically and you see that this relic is spawning, you're just going to say, oh, well, we don't even need to worry about it, whatever. Well, in about 30 seconds, another relic will spawn and then the abilities from that first relic and the second relic will both be active and then if a third one spawns, then three relics will be active and he'll gain immunity so basically you have to make sure that less than three relics are spawned and you also have to make sure that you're trying to kill them as quickly as possible because you don't want to be taking extra damage and getting extra things from them because these relics are pretty powerful and they ha there is a couple ones that are better than others but it's really important that you destroy them as quick as possible just get one damage or something over there and he can just do it by himself or get both damage or something it's a system that you're going to have to figure out. It's very easy to find them, like I said. You're not going to have any problem with that. But the only thing that I have to note is that the Wa Musu relic is a very powerful relic. This relic will rain lightning 
AoE on everyone in your team and it deals a ton of damage. I'll show you gameplay of it, but it is very powerful and it is super effective. This can literally kill you in a few seconds, like 10, 12 seconds of you just standing there. It'll kill your whole team. So you have to make sure you guys are on top of that relic. As soon as it happens, you need to go over there, get your healer there, get everyone on that relic, try to destroy it as quickly as possible. But the rest of the relics are pretty easy. You just don't want to make them stack because as soon as they stack, it gets much more difficult to keep up with them and he'll get more powerful. There'll be more ads, just stuff like that. So make sure to destroy the relics. Make sure to watch out for his claw attack because that can be kind of powerful. And then watch out for Wamasu because that crap is crazy. Anyway, moving on to the next boss. The second to last boss on here is a kind of tag team called Ulfnor and Sabina Cetus. This is kind of like a tag team, you could say, but it's really not because Ulfnor is the only guy who has any health considering Sabina is already dead. She's a ghost and she kind of lingers above Ulfnor. Now, Ulfnor, like I said, has all the health and he uses almost exclusively fire abilities and he has a two-hand sword which he'll hit you with sometimes, but he has two to three kind of if you count one of them he has an ability where he'll stream this fire across the ground you'll see him he's like kind of like looking at the ground like moving his hands all weird and there'll be these little circles that just shoot across the ground really quickly and they do like a really small amount of damage but if you stand in the fire too long it'll build up and it's not something super bad but it's like it's kind of there to like show you that if you get hit with something else or you get hit with a bunch of damage this can kill you and then he also has this really powerful AoE attack where he charges up his sword and then he swings, which is his first attack, and then if he doesn't hit anything, or even if he does, I think he still will launch these little spirals of AoE wind of fire that will go around the room and they'll bounce off walls and they'll go for a little bit. But the big thing is that his swing is very powerful. It can one-hit you. That swing, you'll see him charge up, and if he hits you with it, you're basically going to be dead so if you miss that that's good and then he'll release these little fire circles that'll go around the room now he also has this little ring type thing which causes a little bit of damage but it's very insignificant and it's really unnoticeable so it's really okay and besides that like I said he has a really powerful swing he's pretty simple he's not too difficult the person you're really looking at is Sabina she is a pretty crazy ghost type thing so she has very different attacks right she'll sit on top of Ulfnor for almost the entire battle while she sits on top of him she'll either throw ice shards or she'll launch herself at you and if she hits you she'll deal damage to you so very basic attacks except for one exception where she will fly off of Ulfnor and run into a corner of the room and she will pick one of your team to chain and you'll be slammed onto the ground if you get picked and then your whole team, it should be very obvious, your whole team will see you getting dragged along and you can't do anything. You're immobilized and you cannot break out. The only way to break free from her, and if you do get all the way to her, she will kill you. The only way to break out is one of your teammates have to use either an interrupt ability or they have to kill her. So, obviously an interrupt ability is way faster but killing her is also an option if no one has an interrupt ability, which is just fine. She doesn't have too much health, but like I said, interrupt ability is definitely the way to go. And she she's pretty easy to kill. She's nothing too strong, except if you let her kill you with this chain, it can really throw off your whole thing. If there's a bunch of drama going on and then the healer gets snagged, it can really be a big deal if no one has an interrupt ability. So obviously when you do this dungeon, like I've said, with several bosses, you have to use this interrupt you should probably start running an interrupt ability for this dungeon. So, Sabina is pretty simple to kill, but she has a very powerful ability that can really knock you off balance, and that big Ulfnor guy only has a really powerful swing, but that's about it. They're pretty easy. You just gotta make sure you're not getting chained. You gotta make sure you're being careful of the AoE fire attacks, you're being careful of his swing, and you're careful of her ice things, but it's pretty simple. So now we have the final boss. This is the last guy that you're gonna be fighting, and he's pretty difficult he's probably the most interesting thing it's the big dragon that we've all been waiting for now his name is Thorvakun and he's paired up with Orvin the Black that we've been following the entire dungeon so really in this battle you're only gonna be fighting the big bad dragon so this guy has a chain of events that happens most like a lot of final bosses and it's all based on his health so I'm gonna look at his first attacks his basic attacks and then we'll look at the chain so his first attacks are pretty strong and they can really knock you out if you let them. So 
His first one is that he'll charge up a cone of ice shields with his tail and then he'll release them in a cone and they'll do pretty good damage. The only thing is there's some gaps in between the cones so you can jump in between them. Of course I'll have gameplay of everything on screen but just make sure he's going to charge up his tail and then make sure you're dodging that. And his second attack is where he'll create a massive AoE attack that is just poison on the ground and it just moves around the room and it is very very strong. Especially in hard mode, this poison will kill you instantly. It is very strong. And then, the Vakun can also trigger these snares if anyone gets too close to him. So, it's really annoying for the tank, but everyone else basically should stay away from Thor Vakun. And the tank will just get snared a couple times, and it's really not that big of a deal for the tank. But, everyone else needs to stay a good distance away from him. And then, the final basic attack, which is really Orin, but whatever. He can cast this ice shard single target that will deal a lot of damage and he'll just cast it to one person every few seconds or so and it can be interrupted so like I said in this dungeon you really need to have an interrupt ability because he has a high ground and there's no other way to stop him from casting it so you have to have an interrupt ability to stop him or else he's just gonna be picking you off so be very careful with that now besides the basic attacks that's about all that Thor Vakun can do besides the chain of events so the first thing that happens in this chain of events is at his 85 75 65 and 55 percent health these crystals will spawn and they'll be very easy to see it'll be a big deal the NPCs will be talking about it and stuff and there'll be four crystals that all spawn adds at this percentage of health so no matter how quickly you kill the crystals there will be at this next percentage of health so if you don't kill a crystal then there's just gonna be another one that spawns as you kill the boss so it's very important because you don't want a ton of ads if you have two crystals out that'll just double the amount of ads that the crystals spawn so make sure that you're destroying the crystals but it's very simple because as you're easy to kill it's not a big deal they're really easy it's a very easy mechanic just make sure you're killing the ads you're killing the crystals as quick as possible and then after he gets about half health this will start the second phase now the second phase is where Orin will come down from his high ground and he'll begin to spawn waves of ghosts on the side of the room. These ghosts will kill you instantly if you touch them. So what you have to do is you have to find your friendly NPC who is going to be on the other side of the room making a shield for you. If you run behind that NPC, she will block a little portion of the ghost. Not very much, just like four or five ghost link and you have to make sure you are running to her as quickly as you possibly can it'll charge up so you will have a good warning about when the ghosts are gonna come because they'll stand there for a minute but you really need to hurry because it's a long room it's very big so you could easily get lost trying to get over there and you will die instantly the ghost will kill you in one hit so after you kill him you're gonna be so excited no more ghosts you kill them but Orin is going to resurrect him to about half health. So that's pretty annoying. And then Thorvacoon gets so strong after he dies. He gets two new abilities and he becomes very powerful. So the first ability that he has is that he will walk up to a corner of the room and he will just scream which causes fear for you and your teammates so you will start to do the fear animation where you run away and you have to quickly use crowd control break and you have to break out of it and then instantly as soon as he calls it and you're running away you're gonna get this red circle that comes up underneath you and it will start to get bigger like it's gonna explode so the only way to avoid this AoE attack is that you need to run on the yellow circles that are gonna be placed inside the room the room is gonna have four yellow circles one for everyone on your team but they can only be used once so after you have this red AoE you need to make sure to run on the yellow circles as quickly as you possibly can and you also want to make sure that you're correlating with your teammates with to run on the circles because if you run on one circle that your friend is going for your friend is not going to get that circle and they're going to be screwed. So you need to say, I'm going for this circle over here. You guys go with those ones because you can only get one circle per person. Now, if you do hit the circle and you all get in the circle correctly, you're still going to get the red AOE thing. Don't worry about it. You're not going to take any damage if you get in the circle. So you need to make sure you're running for the circle and correlating with your team about it. So after that, he has another ability where he'll spawn these skeletons in the corner of the room and all of this will just continue until you kill him so he gains a few new basic attacks where he'll like launch these orbs at you but nothing too special and the only thing is if you're playing on hard mode on veteran which 
I obviously didn't do that because I'm like level three and a half. So if you're playing on hard mode, there is one extra mechanic where after you kill him and he gets half of his health back, there will be ghosts again on one side of the room, except there will be really small holes, like one or two ghost link size holes throughout the wall of ghosts and you have to find them on your own there's not going to be anyone guiding you no yellow heroes to save you or anything you just have to find the holes and you have to run in there and basically be lucky it's kind of hard to tell but if you're really looking for them you shouldn't have a difficult time with it but besides that that's about it the gear sets in here are a tank set and a magicka dps set um nothing too special the other Dungeon scale color peak had a healer set so it's pretty nice that they're adding a set for pretty much everybody except for stamina stamina really didn't get anything too good but um that's about it guys i hope you enjoyed these videos i know this one came out pretty late the dlc has been out for a while but i really have just been kind of working hard on this and i i want to make sure that i knew exactly what was going on in these dungeons and i don't have a lot of time anyway for videos so thank you guys so much for watching these videos take a ton of effort um, pump play sign off.